Warning, this video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1041. You've been warned. Hello, my Nakamotachi, this is Droid Girl, and I wanna discuss what's become quite the complex and complicated prophecy concerning Joy Boy, the dawn of the world, and how this might relate to Momonosuke. And of course, this has been partly brought on as a result of the latest chapter, 1041, where Yamato suggested that Momonosuke might actually be the prophesized figure to bring about the new dawn. And I think this is quite a juicy detail and and a lot of fans have been speculating about what this means for Momonosuke, how he relates to Joy Boy, if Momo is Joy Boy, which is an idea that I've discussed in the past because I do know that some fans have been speculating for some time now that Momonosuke is actually Joy Boy. And that idea has always struck me as quite intriguing because for the most part, I've always assumed, and I think it's safe to say that most of the fan base probably assume that that figure is actually Luffy, you know, as the main character with all of the connections that could be made between Luffy and Joy Boy. So initially, reading the last chapter, reading Yamato's words, it did confuse me for a while. But then I've gone back and I've had time to reread some of these chapters and reconsider all of these elements of this great prophecy. And I think I've clarified it in a way that makes sense, or at least to me makes sense. But I want to share my thoughts with you guys and I want to hear what you all have to say about it. So I want to start with the statement that Momonosuke is not Joy Boy. And I think that might be good news for quite a number of people because I've seen some very passionate comments on this topic. I actually saw one comment from my chapter 1041 review with someone saying that if Momonosuke is revealed to be Joy Boy, then they're actually going to drop the series. So I'm here to share the good news that no, you don't need to drop One Piece, keep reading because I really don't think that Momonosuke is going to be revealed to be Joy Boy, but I do think that he's a crucial figure in this prophecy about the dawn. And I think part of the confusion is that this idea of the dawn has been brought up multiple times down in the series. It's been referenced by a number of different individuals all through different contexts, and I think they've also sort of touched at it from different angles, even though they've all been circling around the same idea. For example, there's the idea of Joy Boy not simply being a figure of the past, but perhaps being the figure who's going to bring about the new dawn. The dawn being mentioned by multiple characters, most notably the Mix and the Kazuki clan or Toki. And then the idea of sovereigns that the Sea King mentioned during Odin's flashback. And then the way that they were talking about it, it seemed to suggest that that sovereign was again referring to Joy Boy, or at least this other prophesied figure, the other one of the sovereigns obviously referring to Poseidon or Shirohoshi, and then all of this possibly going back to the figure that Roger is waiting for. And I do think that Luffy is Joy Boy or is the prophesized figure central to all of this. You know, he's likely to be the Joy Boy of this generation if that's how the whole Joy Boy thing works. But at the least, Luffy is the representation of the dawn. And I think this has been established from very, very early on in the series, apart from the fact that Luffy is of course our main character. I think one of the clearest indicators of this was as early as the Marineford arc, where Whitebeard during his final moments tells Blackbeard that you are not the one that Roger is waiting for. And then going on to warning Sengoku and the world government that there will come an individual who's going to change the world. Or as he said it, I think the words were challenge the world and turn it upside down. And again, I think it was pretty clear even in that moment that the one, the individual that Whitebeard was referring to was Luffy. And yes, of course, a part of it is because again, Luffy is the main character. But then there's also the fact that Whitebeard saw it necessary to tell his sons to protect Luffy and make sure he survives. And sure, that was partly because Luffy is Ace's brother, but also I think he saw Luffy's potential and at the very least understood Luffy's significance. And I think these last words from Whitebeard now have even greater significance and makes a lot more sense now that we've seen what we've seen through Odin's flashback, knowing what the Roger pirates found at Laugh Tale. After finding out all of the world's history and its secrets, Roger says that someone will be born and will surpass us. And then Odin similarly says that they must open Wano's borders before Joy Boy appears. And from these statements, from these two characters who we know to know the world secrets, it seems like both of them were suggesting that there will come a figure in the future. And I think that then pretty heavily suggests that that could not be Momonosuke in that case because Momo was already born at that time. And this goes back to a point that I did discuss very recently about Momonosuke and the possibility of him being Joy Boy in a very recent video because going back to the conversation about the Sea Kings, about their sovereigns, again, they suggest that a sovereign is going to be born soon. And again, can't be Momo because Momo was already born at this point. And then like I mentioned in that 
video, when you look at chapter 626, when Otohime is talking about someone who's going to help guide Poseidon use her powers for good, we see a silhouette and that silhouette really resembles Luffy. And then when you start thinking about silhouettes and how they have been used to unveil some of the lore of One Piece, we saw really recently a silhouette of the sun god Nikai in the Wano arc. And of course, we've already made the connections between that silhouette to the silhouette that we saw of Luffy in Skypiea, the same very arc where we saw the idea of a sun god being mentioned. And that silhouette of Luffy also again quite heavily resembled the silhouette of Nika. And then when you think about sun god Nika and the idea of a new dawn, the dawn symbolizing the rising sun to bring about the new day, I don't know, I think the symbolism is all there. And then going further, we continue to see Oda continuously heavily pointing to the idea of Luffy being the dawn, most particularly through Pedro before we get to the Wano arc. Pedro says on more than one occasion during the Whole Cake Island arc that he's certain that it's the Straw Hats who's going to bring about the new dawn, that he has a suspicion that the Straw Hats are the ones that the Minks and the Kazuki clan have been waiting for centuries to guide them into the dawn of the world. And then this is supported by Odin during his flashback as well, because he says that Wano and actually the entire world is waiting for a figure, and then also that when that figure comes, when that time comes, Wano must welcome that figure, must be prepared to work with them. And I think that this statement then points to the idea that this figure is a figure coming outside of Wano, therefore again, it can't be Momonosuke. What's really interesting is that Yamato seems to believe that this is all referring to Luffy as well. Because in chapter 1016, we see Yamato tell Kaido that Luffy is the one that Odin has been waiting for, which is a really interesting word choice because it's along the same lines of what Whitebeard said, that there's someone that Roger is waiting for. But then the fact that Yamato said this, of course raises the really interesting question of how then this connects to Momonosuke and what Yamato said to Momonosuke about him being the one to bring the new dawn. Because Yamato has actually said this a couple of times. Chapter 1041 was not the first time that Yamato told Momonosuke, you're the one to bring the world to a new dawn. This was also said in chapter 996, when again Yamato told Momonosuke, you're the one that's going to guide the world into the new dawn, again based on what was said in Odin's journal. And this is what Momonosuke must have also realized for himself also reading his father's journal because we then see him say in chapter 1014 that it is imperative that he survives. But then I think what's important to hone in here is actually the word choice because I think it's important to note that whereas Yamato said that Luffy is the one that Odin's been waiting for, the wording when talking to Momonosuke was that Momonosuke is going to be the one to bring the world to its dawn. Not that Momonosuke himself is the dawn, he's going to be the one that brings the dawn. So then when you peek these together, I think it becomes pretty clear that both Luffy and Momonosuke have really important roles to play in this upcoming great war that's going to turn the world upside down. And based off everything that we've gone through so far, Luffy is going to be the reincarnation of Joy Boy, he's going to be the representative of the Dawn, you know, the prophesized figure, the sovereign that the Sea Kings were mentioning, the one that Roger and Odin have been waiting for. But then Momo will also play into this prophecy somehow, because Momo is going to be the one that brings the world to its Dawn. And I think the way that Momonosuke fits is exactly through Odin's prophecy. Now, some of you guys might remember that quite a while ago, I made a video explaining that Toki's last words, her prophecy about the moon being unaware of the dawn and the nine shadows, I discussed in that video how that is actually Odin's prophecy and that Toki is actually just repeating Odin's words. Because even though it's generally referred to as Toki's prophecy in the series as well as by the fan base, it's pretty clear that those were Odin's words to Toki, which then Toki repeated to the rest of the world. And as a part of that video, I said that Odin was talking directly to Toki as well as through her, actually calling Toki the moon unaware of the dawn. But also, this obviously doesn't relate to Toki alone. The moon is representative of Toki, the Kazuki clan, of Wano as a whole, and even of the Minx. The symbol of the moon is really heavily integrated into all of these characters, into all of these players. And that really makes sense in terms of the prophecy because the Kazukis, the Minx, they are the moon waiting for the dawn. As Pedro said, the Kazuki clan and the Minx have been waiting for the dawn for centuries. And in that sense, they are the moon, they are the night time waiting for the dawn. And I think the most representative of this symbol right now is Momonosuke. And the way that it makes sense is that Momo is most representative of the moon right now on behalf of his clan, on behalf of his people, on behalf of the Kazuki and the Minx alliance. And Momo is the moon who's going to bring the world to 
to its dawn, and this can be translated to Momo being the figure who's going to bring Luffy to the world. And this was actually essentially said as much in chapter 999, where we actually see Yamato say that Momonosuke meeting Luffy out of all the pirates he could have met and bringing Luffy to Wano must be faked. Because obviously bringing Luffy to Wano isn't just going to save Wano, but it's going to be pivotal to what continues to unfold for the rest of the world by using whatever they uncover, whatever there is to uncover at Wano, you know, by finding out how Wano is connected to the world's history, all of its secrets, Luffy will be able to use that to turn the world on its head, and Momonosuke, as the Kazuki heir, is going to be critical in helping Luffy achieve this. Because I think that's what Yamato is referring to in chapter 1041, when Yamato makes a reference to Odin's prediction. Perhaps Momonosuke must carry on the will of the Kazuki clan, because as Odin found out that the Kazuki clan was the one responsible for closing Wano's borders, it is the Kazuki clan who must now open it. And I think whatever Odin found out, I think he realized it was his mission as a Kazuki. And in a sense, I think it was actually a mission he saw that he himself was responsible of fulfilling, but then realized as his time was coming to an end that that will must be carried on by Momo. Maybe what he wrote down in his journal wasn't even that Momonosuke himself is the one to bring about the new dawn, but that it must be the responsibility of a Kazuki. And that's why Odin told Toki, should I die, you must use your powers to catapult Momonosuke, the next generation of the Kazuki, into the future to achieve this mission to fulfill this prophecy. And then so if we go back to the prophecy, if we can peg down Luffy as the dawn and Momonosuke as the moon, then that leaves the nine shadows. And I'm going to go back to a theory that I made ages ago, that the nine shadows is actually referring to the straw hats. Because if you don't count Luffy, who represents the dawn, then there are nine straw hat members, ready to fulfill this prophecy as the nine shadows that's going to cast the brilliance of the dawn in that the straw hats are going to be the one that helps show Luffy's brilliance to the rest of the world. And if you think about it, this is what Pedro had been talking about all along as well. Pedro's mention of the new dawn is one of the earliest times we saw this idea being introduced to us. And when Pedro mentioned it when he talked about the new dawn, Pedro always referred to the Straw Hat crew, not just Luffy, but the Straw Hats. Now as to whether this means the Straw Hats will play a role in the fight against Kaido himself, which is something that I said I would love to see as part of my theory, now that seems a little more unlikely given the fact that the main combatants of the crew are pretty much out of commission, so maybe this will just come into fruition in a more metaphorical sense. But then again, given what we saw in the anime openings of the Straw Hats alongside Luffy in facing off against Kaido, maybe we will actually see this in a more literal sense as well. I guess only time will tell. But for now, this is how I've interpreted all of the elements of the prophecy. Momonosuke as the moon, who's going to bring about Luffy's dawn to the world. And then with Luffy's nine shadows, the straw hats, who's going to back him up, who's going to help Luffy's brilliance shine. And this is how we're going to see the world turn on its head. But then let me know what you guys think of how I've clarified this. Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Please do subscribe if you'd like more more One Piece discussions. You can also join our Joy Fleet Discord server or even become a patron member. And I want to thank all my patrons for help supporting the channel. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.